That railgun's gonna recharge between shots. So get on the turret and hold these bastards off! You heard him, Delta! Take out those blocks! Pardon me.
that. Katie's dead. Jack's been destroyed. Police are robots. We got data back up. I hope. Um. And effectively, the locusts are back. Pause is alive. Oh, Cole made it. That's good. To, that's good to hear. And Kate gets welcomed into the family since. She'll be back. I know. But not if we find her first.
And that is Gears 5. Adjust my position here so that I can speak more directly in the camera. That was interesting. Um, I enjoyed the game. Um... It was fun. Um... But definitely there are some of those combat encounters which were kind of a mess. Um, the one with the rocket assembly with the two snatchers and the three Zions is... It's a bad idea in terms of put together. Again, as I mentioned, if repeat it, like one snatcher in, on their own in a confined space is a very potent, dangerous... Um... So... They, like, snatchers are nothing to sneeze at in this game when you're playing it in single player. Because when you're playing in single player, you are relying much more heavily on the AI to coordinate. Rescuing whoever's been caught by the snatcher under those circumstances. So, like, ideally, what, again, what the, the right way to handle that situation is... Check something. Did my audio get fucked? Let's with no oh, okay audio levels get better fine. I updated Streamlabs before stream before recording this session. So you know, with the snatcher, what you want to do, like what makes those encounters work better, is pardon my creaking. Um, you want like if, if you're if you're having a wider area and more room to cover and more room to maneuver to get away from the snatchers, then throw two at them. If you, in fact, if you want to do two Snatchers and three Scions, that's a good way to do it. Um, if you're do if Actually, here's the thing with this game. Is if you're... How to put this? You should be able to tell whether the players are humans or bots uh, in a game like this. Like, you should be able to tell, okay, we have two humans in play, or four humans in play. Um, or it's just a single player with bots. And balance the fight, and actually be able to rebalance the, the, the fight accordingly. Um, it's just because at the basic level, you can tell. At the software level, you know, okay, this is the number of human inputs you're receiving. So, I don't know, like, how complicated and what how much stuff it would fut stuff but up to do that do it this way. Um, but I'd be interested to see in gear six once we once which will presumably come out in Project Scorpio. And we got sequel hook right there. We're gonna get a gear six. Um but I'd like to see done. And I mean and I hope they do this. And it's actually like seeing more game developers do in general is if you're doing a game with the options for both single player and um, mult and co-op within basically the same campaign missions like with Gears. Um, acknowledge that your AI, your bots, are never going to be as good as a real as a full human player. That they're going to prioritize different targets in the way the human player would. would. They will coordinate not they will not quite coordinate as well as human players would. And so what you need to do is account for that. One of two ways. Make the if three ways. Possibly one, change the loadout, the enemy makeup of a fight. The use example of this encounter which gave me so much prob prob problems at the start of this recording session, um, which will be several days ago if you're watching this on the, um, the edited archives. You want like okay, don't do this one. Okay. One human, four bots. So you need... So we're changed, so we pointing this fight to from two Snatchers, three Scions, with three Scions coming in after the first Snatcher goes down, to just one Scion, three Snatchers. That's more than enough difficulty for the players as it is. Or as a single player as it is. That's still a plenty challenging encounter, but it's one where... It's less likely to lead to repeat failure due to AI being dumb. Now, if it's if you start, okay, 
if you have two humans out of the four possible players. Um, then we tweak this to... Like we're going to say two humans playing the human characters and not Jack. Then now you have, okay, two bots. Um, oh, the, uh, yeah, so two humans, two bots. Just change it to two snatchers. Really a hypothetical scenario. It's entirely up to the studio to figure out how to tune this. But this is like my, 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 my head tuning. So we changed it to two snatchers. Because now the humans are able to, okay, we're going to split up. We're going to use the cover areas, the enclosed environments, where the snatchers can't get at us or have to maneuver around to get at us to game the AI. But we can't rely on that too much because we also have one other or two other human AI characters who can do something real... Not a human, but two other uh, yeah, um, yeah, AI bots which can do stupid things or fit or not pick up what we're laying down and get captured and that sort of themselves and this causing us to divert and have to um, rescue them or just in general even if the bots figure it out or the bots go along with the plan they get thrown into problems and need the humans to come in and rescue them out well full now if we get, now if we get the full away all right everybody's human then throw the book at us two bot uh Two snatchers, and then after the first snatcher goes down, the next um, those three those three scions come out with the uh, with the uh, grinders, and I think it was like two grinders and like the discs, like that. And now we and now now you really got to to think creatively, and. figure this out and you've got enough humans involved that you can actually okay we're gonna before we trigger the fight we're gonna we're gonna talk out the strategy and that sort of thing figure out how things go from there like that sort of thing and this doesn't have to be enemy gears when hate when halo uh, infinite comes out same sort of thing um like halo 5 was based very much around the idea of uh four player co-op and I'd be interested to see in Halo Infinite, okay, we're going to rebalance, like, have the game be able to rebalance the, these missions for, or these combat encounters based on the makeup of players versus bots in your party. This does cause a hitch up when it comes to drop in, drop out co-op, because you could potentially have things shift out mid-fight. Um... But it's an idea that I'd like to see execute, executed. Um, to have game developers just recognize out of the game, humans and bots will always play differently because humans are the craziest peoples. So, Vivil Zen account for this. And. basically push challenge for our players. But the added bit also of, okay, set difficulty and stuff as well, on top of that. And see how things go. Because, like, again, with the, um... With, uh... The actual, like, fight as it played out on Easy, or Beginner, it was still a challenge. I still died a couple times. Uh... I hear these once, maybe a second time, on that fight. It took, it, it took like another couple tries to pull it off. So, with three humans, with three or four humans on easy, that could still be a challenge necessarily. If like everyone's playing on an easy, not because oh, we need to bump down the difficulty because we just want to get through this, but more we're playing it on easy because we want because we're, this is giving us a hard time, uh, or we are. We are inexperienced gamers and or bad at shooters and that sort of thing. Whatever your reasons are, and, you, and honestly, whatever reason you set your game to easy for, they are valid. That sort of thing. So, as far as what is next for my stream, 
Um, next Friday, I'm going to be doing oh whatever our next game is going to be. It's probably going to be either I still haven't quite made my mind yet. Either returning to um, Wizardry Tales of the Forsaken Land, which I've started part way, and see if I can get that up and running on um, the OSSC because I've been having I had some problems a little earlier. Or if I want to tempt fate and go to Sega and do, um, I have Sakura, uh, Sakura Tyson, um, uh, So Long My Love, which is thus far the only Sakura Tyson game to get a English language release in the United States. It's so fitting because it's the only Sakura Tyson game to be set in, in the United States. I'm debating whether to go with dub or sub on this. I'm leaning towards dub because this is a game set in the United States, and so it's American cast. And my rule of thumb when it comes to watching anime myself is if you have an American cast or if you have a cast of characters that are primarily speaking English, I do kind of lean a little more towards, uh, play, towards playing or watching the anime with an English dub, with some exceptions. I watched Black Lagoon primarily dub, uh, the sub. Um, well, I think I switched to dub partway through. Especially with the, like, the finale where you have, um, the last few episodes of the, the Japan arc, where you had, um, characters speaking Russian, Japanese, and the language differences were important to the plot. Uh, so. <sighs> We will finish this out, see if there's a post credit stinger. Um, you know, as far as the choice goes for going with JD. I think that could have been executed better. Here's why. Um, like, you spend basically most of an act without JD. You have the first act, you have the revelation that JD did a very nasty thing. He ordered his drones to fire on civilians with lethal ordnance. And a civilian protester with lethal ordnance. And then he gets in impulsively and brashly, he fires the hammer of dawn once they're ready to target it and leads to his getting maimed and uh, the death of one of the Carmines. And then we go to act... And that bit works well. We go to act two. It's just Dell and eight. They're on the outs from uh, government. They're working with Marcus and Baird on the down low. They are not getting off with GD. They're not getting off, getting along with Foz. And it's just the two of them for a, like, almost, like, um, like, not quite, like, almost half the game. JD and Foz don't, affect, and we get important revelations about the Locust and doesn't turn the swarm and about Kate's background, which JD just isn't there for. When we're reunited with JD and Foz, we get the desert, the dialogue is like, okay, J I, I feel bad about this, but I'm here now. We got work to do. Okay, we got work to do. We can deal with talking this out and stuff later. And nothing touching on what JD's been going through, how he feels about things, how he feels about what happened before, wanting to talk this out, wanting to talk about what he'd done with the drones and um, firing the fire and civilians and anything like that. And on top of all that, we have Foz there too. And Foz is... Um, Foz is an asshole. He's an asshole for, the entire, for that entire act of the game. And people comment on it, but it's not... 
thrown as a minus against this character. Like, it's not the point where, like, if the choice was JD and Foz, I'd have picked JD hands down, because Foz is a character who, if JD had, like, JD is implied has learned from his mistakes and errors, he just hasn't, he just didn't get a chance to explain it and get into it. it sucks. And thus makes that, makes it being more inclined to pick Dell. He needs to have himself, his background fleshed out more. Foz is an asshole, is always an asshole, and doesn't do anything to imply anything less assholish. So, and by the end of the game, he's pretty much at the same character place he was when we first met him at the start of the game. Though so that choice was executed badly, I wish they'd given JD a chance to express his character growth before you make that choice so it has more emotional resonance. Instead, based on the character interactions you've had up to this point, the choice, at least to me, was clearly Dell. I had a stronger emotional connection to him. And that's that. That's Gears 5. Next week, we return to... We will probably return to Wizardry. Or we will return to the PlayStation 2 minimum with either Wizardry or Sakura Wars. See you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 